Cosmetic upgrades are found all throughout the game, from some of the easiest content to some of the hardest content, even PvP. And this account is going to be locked to using those cosmetic items to get more cosmetic items. I'll have to take on some of the hardest content this game has to offer using some pretty uncommon items, from building a dead PKing account to bossing at the highest level. These are just some of the things I'll have to do in only cosmetic items. This is my cosmetic locked account. Before we get into it, let me just say my two rules that I have for this account. The rules and exceptions will also be in the video description if you want to read them later. Firstly, I can only wear and use cosmetic items. This also means no punching or kicking monsters as well as no manual casting spells without a cosmetic staff. The same applies for skilling, but I can use tools from my inventory, just not equip them until I can change them. Secondly, I can also wear imbued and enchanted items. This opens up some other very unique items for me to use, as enchanting or imbuing does cosmetically change items. They basically get a bit lighter, but you can't deny that that is a cosmetic change. But what is a cosmetic item? The way I'll go about this is a cosmetic item is something that has been cosmetically changed, essentially giving it a different color or look. For example, dark bow paint or a twisted ancestral color kit changes the item cosmetically. Another thing is items that are already cosmetically changed. Stuff like any G or T armor you get from clues. This does also include 99 capes because they get trimmed when you have two or more 99s. So anything that has a base form that's been changed. Items like decorative pieces from Castle Wars don't count because they are already in their base form. Unlike an adamant plate body G, which has a base form of a regular adamant plate body. All right, it's time to start the account. Now I have done two things on the account so far. One is played leagues, so I could get together as many league points as I needed since there is a lot of ornament kits from the current and previous leagues that will be very useful. The other thing is a little weird. I have gotten my mining up to just above 80. I had this idea before leagues released and mine stars for most of the time, besides of course getting the prospector. This is so I can get to amethyst and make some amethyst arrows, since these will be my best in slot when I have to PK to get some ornament kits from Bounty Hunter. So this is going to be my AFK activity until I hit that. You might have caught on to me saying that I can use amethyst arrows. That brings me into my one of two exceptions, the ammo slot. I can put any items in this slot. This is the only equipable spot that doesn't have to have a cosmetic item in it. This is so it makes all the cosmetic items I can get actually usable, like a magic short bow imbued for example. One great thing that came from shooting stars is the stardust that I am now going to use to buy gems with and sell them so I can make some money to start my combat training. How am I going to start my combat training you might ask? Well, with a cannon and a shattered relics ornament kit, so I'm going to need a lot of money. First, I'm going to have to get 20 crafting to cut sapphires that I'll get from the gem packs. So let's get that up. That sheep shearer completed for some nice crafting XP. Next, I thought I'd go do dwarf cannon quest so I can unlock the ability to buy and use the cannon, since it ties into my crafting training because the quest gives me some XP. That's dwarf cannon completed. That's gotten me to eight crafting. So I'm now going to go buy some supplies to make molten glass to get the next 12 levels. All right, 20 crafting achieved. It's time to go spend the stardust I have and we'll see just how many gems I get. While I buy the gems, let's talk about my goals a little. I've gone about making money this way instead of, for example, picking up steel plate bodies and selling them because this gets my skills up. That sounds a little unimportant, but I need 750 total level for last man standing. This minigame holds many cosmetic upgrades behind it and heaps of supplies I can use all throughout my account. So it's one of my big goals to make it to that right now. That's all the gems done, and that is a lot more gems than what I thought I'd be getting. This is heaps. That's only 70 to 80 mining just doing stars alone. And I didn't think I'd get that much gems from the amount of stardust I had. That is really, really good. How much is that actually worth? The value on that is 2.6 mil. That's actually a fair bit. All right, I'm going to cut these gems now and then see what crafting level we get to. Starting just before 20, we'll see where all of these get me. A nice little halfway point milestone through my gems. And by that, I mean I've just finished my sapphires. 
That's nearly 2,600 sapphires done, and I'm already level 52 crafting. So this is already going really well for all the XP I'm getting from this, which is great, which is what I wanted. And I still have nearly 1,700 emeralds, nearly 600 rubies, 100 diamonds, and just 27 dragon stones. So there's still a lot of XP to be had, which is really, really good. And I'm looking forward to getting so much more out of this. Now all my gems are done after I've just finished off that one. I got a fair amount of levels from this. I got to 61 crafting, which is already really, really high. This is going to come in handy for many things in the future I need to do, especially just making teleport jewelry. That's really good. I just need to get my magic up for that. But it also caught me a lot, and I mean a lot of cut gems. There is so many in here. This is going to be heaps of money if I sell these. So I'm going to go sell some of them, not all of them, because I only need a little bit of money for my next thing. Time to hit a gem trade up, sell off some of them, and then we can go and start doing what else I want to do to make more money and get more skills up. Just finished off selling as many gems as I want to right now. I got up to 100k. I really didn't have to sell that many because the rubies and diamonds were worth so much. So that helps me a lot. Now I have a plan for what I'm going to do next. It's going to make use of the resources I already have, which is a lot of ores. So what I have to do now is get my smithing up a bit. And to do that, I want to do Knight Sword. But for that quest, I need a red berry pie. And that takes 10 cooking to make. So I'm going to go quickly do a couple quests to get my cooking up a little bit. And that's mainly going to be Cook's Assistant and Gertrude's Cat. That should put me pretty close to being able to get it. And it will leave me off in Varrock if I finish on Gertrude's Cat, which I can then grab the red berries for the pie. Cook's Assistant completed. Gertrude's Cat completed. That got me the cooking level needed, so time to make some red berry pies for the knight sword. I grabbed two iron bars I needed for the quest, so it's time to finally do it. There we go. That's knight sword completed and 29 smithing. Now I can head off to Blast Furnace to make some bars. But first, I'm going to get my agility up to level 30. At level 30 agility, my run energy will restore at nearly two times its current rate and only take about 7 minutes to reach 100% from 0 compared to the current 12 minutes. Blast Furnace involves a lot of running, so this will be massively helpful. That's 10 agility, now on to rooftops. And finally, 30 agility. Oh yeah, these marks of grace will be very useful in the future since I can cosmetically change the graceful items. But that's for the future, and now it's off to the Blast Furnace. But first, let's talk about this episode's sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. You take control over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships of 10 major nations, going from biplanes and armored cars to the fighter jets and tanks of today. Plus, these vehicles aren't just boxes with hit points. War Thunder has one of the most sophisticated vehicle damage models in gaming. You can hit different parts of a plane and have different reactions. Hit the engine, whoops, no more flying for them. There's even different types of ammo, armor, shells, and missiles that behave like their real life counterparts. I personally really love the realism that lets you target specific parts of a vehicle to deal the most damage. You can really immerse yourself in War Thunder's combat since the graphics are so realistic along with the sounds and just how detailed the vehicles are. This is why 70 million players enjoy these epic PvP battles and why you should join today and enjoy them yourself. So make sure you play War Thunder for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox now by using my link in the pinned comment or video description. New and returning players that haven't played in 6 months will also receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms that include multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 silver lions, and 7 days of premium account. And on top of that, to celebrate the holidays and new year of 2024, until the end of January, all players get the three exclusive Gage and Snail decals, Grinch, Rudolph, and Alf on top of it. Everything's available for a limited time only, so be quick. Now, back to the video. All right, I've finally made it up to the Blast Furnace. What I'm going to do here is, obviously, I'm going to go through all the ore and stuff that I have gotten from doing the Motherlode mining to train my mining up before I started the league. So I'm going to go through a lot of this coal here. I'm going to be buying my iron ore here. So I've basically using money to make more money is how I'm going to be going about it. So I'm going to be buying the iron ore here. I'm just going to buy a full inventory, bank it, and just go through and do that here. 
This I'm going to use to make iron bars and steel bars. What I'm going to be doing with the iron and steel bars that I make is actually Giant's Foundry. Giant's Foundry is really good because it actually makes you a lot of money per sword and it makes a fair bit of money per bar and stuff as well. More than what I would get if I smith them into plate bodies and alk them or sold them to a store. So I'm going to buy as much iron as I can here. I shouldn't need to buy too much because I just need to get my smithing up to 30 with these, which won't take very long. And then I can combine the iron and steel at Giant's Foundry. And then once I hit 50, I'll start doing steel and mithril. One iron ore left to hit 1,000 iron ore already. That was so much cheaper than what I thought that was going to be. I barely used any money on that. I used like what? Just a little bit over 25k? Not even, uh, just like 16k? That was really, really cheap. So I'm all good to start making the bars now, but I do want one thing before I start doing it. Since I'm going to be needing coal for a lot of the steel bars and then also the mithril bars in the future, I kind of really want a coal bag. And a coal bag comes from Motherload Mine, and you need 100 gold nuggets for that. I already have 81, so it should be really quick to go get them. So I'm going to quickly home teleport and walk back to Felidor, but it's okay because now I can minigame teleport back to here that I've unlocked it. Now that I have enough golden nuggets, let's buy the coal bag. And there we go. Another collection log for that one. But this is going to massively help me at Blast Furnace because with the coal bag, I can just do this, fill it, and that is now full of 27 coal. So now I can take 27 coal and 27 iron. And since with how the Blast Furnace works, that's all I need to make steel bars because at a regular furnace, you need two coal for every one iron to make a steel bar. But at the Blast Furnace, it's halved. So this coal bag means I make 27 steel bars in one inventory, which basically halves the amount of running I need to do because otherwise I would have to run with one lot of coal, come back and run with one lot of iron. But now I just need one run. 300 iron bars and 700 steel bars have been made. The coal bag really helped with this. It's time to go do Giant's Foundry. Never mind, I needed oak logs for the quest, so there is Monk's Friend finished for 14 woodcutting. And there's 15. That's Giant's Foundry completed. This is now going to be my money maker to buy a cannon. But there is also something else great about this. And that's the double cannonball mold that I can buy from the shop. This will let me make cannonballs two times faster than the regular mold. I will be making a lot of cannonballs, so this will be very helpful. This minigame gets me three things I need right now. The levels I get from making these swords puts me closer to the 750 total level I need for Last Man Standing. The money I get from each sword completion, even with buying the iron ore and paying for the blast furnace, I only use 60k GP to get 300 iron bars and 700 steel. So I'm going to make a massive profit from here. And of course, the third thing being the double ammo mold. Now, I just need to keep doing this minigame to make a bunch of money. Already 50 smithing coming in. I'm going to head back to Blast Furnace now and make some myth bars. With all the ore I have, I can earn more money per sword. I currently have 168k and I've done 11 swords. So each one made me about 11k with iron and steel mixes. So the mithril ones will make me more. But I do have these clue caskets as well. So let's open up these first. All right, let's see if we get anything from these two clues I managed to finish. I also actually nearly finished this hard clue scroll as well. I'm already at step four on it. I finally got one where I had to kill a wizard, so unfortunately that's going to sit there until I can do it. These two are both from Shooting Stars, so we'll see if we get any ornament kits in these. Awesome, like iron, G, or T. That would be really good from the easy, but I can only really get a Rune Scimitar ornament kit from the beginner, so let's go. Well, honestly, that's not that bad. Um, I'll take the five law runes for the future for teleports. And the easy clue scroll. Yeah, it's... Yeah, that one's not that good either. <laughs> that one's just an Armadil page. Granted, the books are able to be used in the future, so it's actually not too bad that I am stacking the pages now because you can actually get ornament kits for all the offhand books uh, with the league points. So there is actually a use for these, so that's actually not the worst. 700 myth bars and 700 steel bars made. That would be good for 50 swords at the Giant's Foundry. If I make 16k per sword, that will get me enough money to finally buy the cannon. From the first sword with mithril and steel bars, I made 17k, which is really good. That means the bars I have in my bank will 100% be enough to buy the cannon. 
Plus, the money per sword will go up when I buy better molds and can hand in better swords for more money. And after many hours, it's finally done. This sword right here is going to be what's going to get me over 800k in cash. I have a lot more bars left than what I thought I would. I've got 200 steel and 200 myth left. That means I only used 500 to get all this money. So I've got 806k. Buying the cannon is only going to cost me 750k. And I'm going to have 50k left over. That's going to be for getting more iron ore so I can make some more steel bars and use the cannonballs. But something else I need to grab is the double ammo mold, which I still need to make two more swords for. Never mind, I'm not done just yet. It's enough cash, but I've got to make two more swords. So it looks like I'll end on close to 850k. Now this will be the last sword that I need to hand in for now. And I can look in the shop and I can finally buy the double ammo mold. This is really going to speed up the cannonball making for the cannon that I'm just about to go buy. So let's take out this near 850k and go finally get this cannon and also get my ornament kits from the league store. All right, so the store here has got all my points in it and all the ornament kits and everything. So I got 36,000 points from the league and that should be good to cover the ornament kits I need. I think I need about 32,000 for all the ornament kits. My first ornament kit I'm buying is going to be the Shattered Cannon Ornament Kit. Now that gave us the four pieces for the cannon, so I'm just going to make my way to Falador and go buy it. Now that we're here, we can purchase our cannon from this guy. Of course, I already did the quest early on to get the crafting XP, so I can just get all the parts now. And that's our full cannon bought, and we've got 46k left over. That was more expensive than what I thought, actually. Oh, well, at least we made the extra money from those other two swords. Otherwise, we might not have been able to afford that. Let me use my ornament kits on all of it now. There we go. We've got our fully ornamented cannon. I'm going to go set it up over here so we can just have a quick look at it. Okay, now we've got the cannon. Now I just need to make some cannonballs and then we can officially start doing some combat with this. It's only taken us about 100 hours to start doing combat on this account. Let me go use up the last of the 200 steel bars I have, make some cannonballs, and then from there we'll see what we can do. So I've ended with 736 cannonballs. Now, what am I going to do with these? I am just going to go start Slayer. What I need to do for that is I need to first go get my first task from Turiel. So let me go do that real quick. Please give me a good task that I can cannon very easily, Turiel. 35 Spiders. That's a very, very easy one to cannon. So I'm going to go get that done very quickly. Finally, the first little bit of combat experience I'll get is this bit of range XP I'll get from killing the spiders and some goblins here. But it feels good to finally start on getting some combat XP. And more of it is going to be coming in very soon. That's my first Slayer task already done. So let me pick up my cannon. And I did get two clue scrolls from this. So these will be really good to do for maybe potentially more ornament kits from these. So I'll keep these for now, but now I'm going to head back up to Edgeville and we are going to get a task from Crystilia. Now it's time to truly start working towards our first, well, cosmetic upgrade item. So let's get our first task from Crystilia. 141 greater demons. Holy shit, is that going to take a long time? <laughs> but you might be asking, what is the item I'm going to get from the wilderness? Well... Let me tell you about it. The item I can get from the wilderness will be a Slayer's Enchantment. This will be used with a Slayer Staff that can be bought from a Slayer Master and will make an Enchanted Slayer Staff. And I'll be able to use this item since I am allowed to use Enchanted items and won't need any attack or strength to wield it while it provides some really good melee stats. And it will also really help me with building my kinda dead PKing account. But I won't get into that now. Let's try and get this Slayer's Enchantment. From Greater Demons, it's a 1 out of 249. So hopefully, I get at this task. Now that I'm up here, all I really have to do is set my cannon. But the issue is, I have 10 HP. Also, when I'm holding my cannon, I'm currently risking a piece if I get killed by a player. So that's also not the best. So I've got to place this thing fast. But the issue is, that Greater Demon currently has aggro on me. 
So that's going to hurt with 10 HP. I'll basically set up my cannon and die instantly. So I think that might be the play. I think I'll go in there. I'll start setting up my cannon, get killed and just run back here. That would be the easiest method instead of world hopping and trying not to get hit the entire time I'm building the cannon. So I'm probably going to die here. I'll get some of it up until I die, but then I can come back and I can do the rest. So time to go all the way back there and do that again. All right, we have the cannon set up. Let me just loot my grave and grab some of my sardines because that's my only food. And now we have the lesser demon here. So now I'm going to go quickly fire this. There we go. And now that's going to start killing the demons. Now all I have to do is just stand here, get a bunch of range levels and combat levels, and hope to God a level 34 doesn't come in here and kill me. Because... I don't want to have to make all these cannonballs again, and I don't want to have to lose 600 cannonballs because that is a massive loss. But yeah, now I just stand here and wait for this cannon just to keep going. So it looks like I might currently have to go cancel this greater demon task with Turiel. This is probably going to happen a bit because since I can't wear any armor at the start, my cannon is heavily, heavily inaccurate. The cannon's accuracy rolls on your own gear, so if you're wearing melee gear, it would roll off your melee accuracy, and if you're wearing ranged, it would roll off your ranged accuracy. Since I'm in nothing, it's currently rolling off my crush accuracy because all attack styles are crush. And since I'm naked, I don't really have any crush accuracy. So the cannon is heavily inaccurate. And against something that's level 104, it's not really going to hit that commonly. So what I am going to do, I'm going to pick up the cannon and I'm going to go to Turiel and Turiel skip this task. Okay, I've been playing on this account for a very short amount of time, but I've already made one hell of a discovery. This is going to change what item I'm actually getting first. And it's not going to be a ornament kit item or an enchanted item. It's going to be an imbued item. So I'm going to be making use of the I in my name and in my rules how I can use imbued items. This isn't going to be an item that most people are going to think of, but let me go through it. The item I'll be going for now is the Skull Scepter. You can get that from the security stronghold by killing these four different monsters to get the parts for it. I honestly thought it wasn't possible to use a cannon here, but it is. This was going to be my second item after the Slayer Staff for that very reason. And look at this, the wiki hasn't lied to me. This is going to be good. Obviously the first piece comes from these minotaurs here, so let's start killing them with this and I am going to hide so they can't attack me. I can just go in and out of these doors and just fill up the cannon. So it's one of the best places for me to actually farm early on. So I'm so glad I thought about potentially getting this first. These guys have got really low defenses and stuff too. So the cannon should be fairly accurate on them. Of course, it will also kill these rats occasionally as well, which does suck, but it's just going to be some levels at the end of the day, isn't it? That was incredibly quick. That's already the right skull half right there. That's one of the four we need. So... Let's pick this up and head on to the next level to try and get the next one. I've actually already completed, like I've gone to every level on this account because when I was mining the stars, this is how I made some of my money to actually buy the rune pickaxe I was using to mine them. So that's coming in handy now. So it's been very helpful. The next monster is going to be these flesh crawlers. They're obviously much higher level than the minotaurs. Got more HP, but I think the cannon can still one shot them. So that will be really good. They have pretty low defenses, so it should be fairly accurate on them as well. And they don't really hit for much, so setting up the cannon is pretty risk-free. Now, same strat again. I'm going to set this up and then just hide behind the door. So, time to do that. That's the bottom of the scepter coming in. I think that was close to drop, right? Yeah, I got that at 30kc, and it's a 1 in 33 from here. So, time to pick up the cannon, and then we're going to go down one more level. This is when it's going to get a lot worse to get them. Once I go down to the next level... The monsters are going to become much stronger and it's going to hurt every single time I go in there. Plus, the cannon is going to hit very infrequently on them. Katablopon are the next ones we have got to kill. They're nearly double the combat level of the flesh crawlers and they hit much harder. So getting in there and setting up this cannon, probably going to be a death sentence, but at least I can walk back here and keep going again. Okay, we did that actually safely. That's very good. So that should start shooting them. And we'll see if it can hit very often and we can kill them. Okay, it took 30 cannonballs to kill one of them. This, I am definitely going to need to make more cannonballs from this grind. I don't think I'm going to get it from this inventory, but at least I can go make some more cannonballs and then we can come back and hopefully get it in the next inventory. Another really bad thing about cannoning these guys I didn't think about is 
when I go in here, they also lower my stats. I also forgot that my attack stat affects my accuracy of the cannon as well. So drinking these wines was a horrible idea because they lower my attack to zero, which makes me even more inaccurate. Having at least one attack, I'm at least occasionally accurate. That's why the first kill went so easily and I've only gotten two kills in all these cannonballs that I bought here. So I definitely have to avoid food that's going to lower my attack and just hope that the cannon kills them and I get the scepter pretty early. Okay, I've died and I was basically out of cannonballs, but that's okay. Just finished buying the ores I needed, so I got 500 more iron ore. And another good thing since I last came here is I now have 60 smithing. And that means one thing. I can now talk to the foreman just here and tell him that I have 60 smithing. He will let me then... Never mind, maybe it just does it automatically. All right, it looks like it does that automatically now. You used to have to talk to him once you got 60 smithing, and then you don't have to pay that 2.5k fee anymore. So now I don't have that little 10 minute timer ticking down of having to pay him an extra 2.5k. I can just put money straight in the coffer and then just make my bars. Okay, we're back. And I now have 2000 cannonballs and I went and stole myself some cakes. I got 10 thieving in the process. So that's some nice extra total levels, putting me closer to last man standing. But let's set up this cannon now and then actually use a bunch of cannonballs and get this skull scepter piece very quickly, hopefully. Wow, that was, that was very quick because that's the first kill after I came back. Let's pick this up, I suppose, and then head down to the last level for the last piece. Now, just to get the last piece, which is going to come from the Anku. So, Anku are obviously just a little bit higher level than the previous monster, but they can also max hit an 8. That's nearly all my HP, so probably going to die a bit in this room and have to come back every time I go in and fill my cannon up. That's just going to be how it goes with this account when I'm 10 HP. Soon, I can actually start training as soon as I get this last piece and have my first weapon. So let's quickly get in there, set up this cannon, and then get our first weapon that I can use on this account. Well, I was right that I was going to die because not even a second later I've died just while trying to set up the cannon. So let's make our run all the way back there. There it finally is. It got me while I was eating, of course, but the left skull half. This grind has been shit. You want to know how many times I've died? I, I can't remember, but I've died, I think, 12 times. It's really good. I love that. So I'm going to pick that up, and then I'm going to go get the other parts out of my bank and also the boots. I could also go out here and die before I pick this up, so that's also another incredible thing that could happen. Okay, real good. I'm going to go get the other things now. Now it's finally time to make my first weapon. By the way, I didn't really mention it, but as you can see, I've been logged in for three hours. The last skull piece from the Enkus took me three hours and 12 deaths. And I've only got this many cannonballs when I had just a bit over 2,000. That was insane. I went dry there. I 41 kills. It's a little bit dry, but still. That was the worst one to possibly go dry on. But anyway, now I just basically have to make this staff, combine them like that, and I've got it. But as you can see, it's not imbued. But if I think I use it on this guy, can you imbue my thing? Yes, he can. There we go. We have a Skull Scepter Eye. That is our first imbued item we've got on the account. Now, I have three melee strength and 10 crush bonus. So my cannon might actually start hitting. But this also means I can actually start trading up my strength. And I think that's exactly what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to get higher HP and train my strength. Because I am sick of getting killed or nearly one shot by Anku and any other monster. If I have any hope of finishing my Greater Demon Slayer task, I want higher HP, so I'm not one shot. So I'm going to get on with that. But that's where I'm going to leave the episode. If you've watched this far, subscribe and like the video. Also, feel free to ask any questions you have about the account in the comments. I do read them all, and I will answer all the questions you have. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you're all looking forward to this account's progress as much as me. But for now, I'll have to see you all in the next episode. Don't forget to use my link in the description or the pinned comment to start playing the game and join the other millions of people who are already playing it. Thank you War Thunder for sponsoring the episode.